Welcome to the Peer Exchange video editorial series entitled Management of Breakthrough Pain in Cancer Patients. I'm Dr. Jeff Gooden, Director of Pain Management and Palliative Care at the Englewood Hospital and Medical Center in Englewood, New Jersey. For today's discussion, I'm joined by leading experts with a wide range of experience in the management of breakthrough pain in cancer patients. Dr. Charles Argoff is Professor of Neurology at the Albany Medical College and Director of the Comprehensive Pain Center at Albany Medical Center. Jerry Ashley is Director for Life Planning Palliative Medicine Services in Memphis, Tennessee. Vitaly Gordon is Professor of Anesthesiology and Associate Vice Chair of Chronic Pain and the Director of the Pain Medicine Division at Penn State Hershey Pain Management. Dr. Mark Rappaport, Medical Oncologist at the Western Connecticut Medical Group in Danbury, Connecticut. So let's get started. Breakthrough pain commonly occurs in patients with advanced cancer and is disabling and burdensome to the individual, yet it's often inadequately managed. Because pain is so heterogeneous, the best management of an individual's pain, including breakthrough pain and cancer, requires a thorough assessment to individualize treatment strategies. Breakthrough cancer pain takes quality time away from patients. Breakthrough cancer pain, or BTCP, is different from persistent pain treated with long and short-acting opioids. Breakthrough cancer pain, or BTCP, can occur despite adequate therapy for persistent pain. So let's go to the panel. Uh, Mark, how do you define breakthrough pain in cancer patients? So as the only oncologist on the panel, I, I have a lot of experience in cancer-related pain. So we have three general levels. We have short, you know, onset pain. We have chronic pain, which ex patients experience all the time. And then we have this like breakthrough cancer pain, which comes in very short spurts and normally doesn't have any good target to kind of hit it, except what we already have for the long and short acting meds. So I break it into three different subsets. You know, the long acting, the short acting pain, the chronic pain, and the brisk, fast acting pain. That's great. Charles, how about from a literature perspective? Are there any formal definitions of breakthrough pain? Well, I would just add to what you've said already, or Mark said already, that, that um, we want to distinguish pain that occurs, um, acute pain that occurs from breakthrough pain, breakthrough pain or poorly controlled chronic pain. So uh, really the definition that I'm most familiar with incorporates the fact that a person who has breakthrough pain needs to have well-controlled baseline pain. And so that this pain is above and beyond the pain that has been already controlled. Sure. Almost so poorly, poorly controlled chronic pain is not breakthrough pain. Right? Of course. So it almost sounds like this breakthrough pain episode is a flare or an exacerbation of pain in somebody who's already on analgesics. Jerry, has that been your experience? Yes, and it, it just spikes, and sometimes it's a, uh, most of the time it's a short spike, but can be, in fact, a longer spike recording short acting, the faster spikes recall, uh, re requiring uh, the rapid acting. So, Vitaly, if we're introducing our audience to this concept of breakthrough cancer pain, uh, are there any tools that we use to diagnose it, or do we just wait till patients come in and say, hey, I have breakthrough pain, you know? Well, how do we look at a, a typical breakthrough cancer patient? Not to be difficult here on the panel. I don't want to steal Mark's thunder. Of course, our oncology colleagues, they institute very uh, tumor-specific uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and so forth. And then, let's say the patient goes into remission and has maybe a baseline pain, which is typically a mixed pain, somatic and neuropathic. But they can come to us, uh, pain management physicians, with their first complaint of new onset of pain. So we need to be very diligent as far as collecting history, doing physical exam, ordering proper diagnostic studies, because by definition, any new patient in a cancer patient should be assumed as a recurrence of their disease unless proven otherwise. So as I mentioned, we uh, uh, take history, do physical examination. There are very specific tools. Um, there is uh, a functional pain uh, assessment scale. Um, there is obviously the numeric scale, which is uh, rather primitive, but at the same time can be used. There are very specific tools for cancer patients. There is an MD Anderson 
uh, pain assessment uh, scale, uh, which is incorporating very specific to cancer patients side effects, let's say, of chemotherapy, such as mucositis, nausea, uh, dry mouth, um, fatigue, burden from the cancer, and so forth. There is Charles Cleland's uh, assessment tool, which is also uh, widely used. There are neuropathic pain assessment tools that are used, and, and Charles know, uh, knows way more about them than I do, but they, they can be used. So uh, we, we do these in order to determine the uh, uh, time relationship, uh, activity relationship, when it occurs, at night, during, um, uh, uh, let's say, weight bearing, you have to be very suspicious, maybe this is a pathological fracture. And uh, they come uh, to us with the first onset of uh, uh, you know, thoracic pain, and, and this is a pathological fracture in the thoracic spine, uh, or maybe a pathological fracture in the hip from a metastatic disease and so forth. Sure, so you know, you talk about some...